Guinness and the Rugby Podcast, we'd like to uh, welcome you to Bitter Rivals. Hello everyone. So I'm Jim Hamilton, um, the Scottish legend, or um, <laughs> as we know, born in uh, the capital of Scotland of Coventry. Uh, yeah. uh, to a Chinese mother, so my father says, and a Scottish father, so my mother says, and that is the gospel truth. Um, I couldn't win many games, I'll be honest, I actually got more yellow cards than I did winning games. So that's what I'm more known for. Um, but yeah, we're actually, you know, we're privileged to be here. I think Goody wants to intro himself as well. Um, uh, you might not recognise him, he's slightly, well, maybe not as big as... Okay, so you know, Cheers, Jim. Um, so how many, win, how many wins did you get for Scotland? Um, I think I won... Three. Three. <laughs> beat, Romania, beat Romania and Georgia twice. <laughs> uh, beat Ireland twice as well. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Obviously, uh, you know, pleasure to be here as well. Um, I've known these two guys to my right for a, a long, long time. Uh, for the, those of you that don't know, yes, I have had my hair done. Just thank you out there that need it doing as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, delighted to be here. Obviously, going to intro uh, to absolute legends. There's uh, a little rugby tournament around the corner in terms of uh, the British Lions coming up. Obviously, Jim and I weren't that good, so we never made it. We're lucky enough to hear have uh, a couple of guys that have played many times for the, the Lions. So, um, without further ado, Will Greenwood. Hey. So, it's good times. I like you two. Gordon's far too aesthetically pleasing. I also had a sort of face for radio. That would uh, simply accumulate nicknames. There's an older generation in the crowd, so Russ Abbott is one <laughs> a few times. Uh, Anton de Beck, most recently. Uh, Shaggy, the cartoon character, the first 10 years. I mean, so the crew, but there aren't any works being thrown here. They gave me my favourite nickname in the World Cup Quarter Final in 2003 when they were absolutely battering us in that first half. Colin Chavez nicking the ball at every breakdown, Stephen Jones kicking the corner, Shane Williams, we knew he was out there because he was in the programme, we couldn't see him, we couldn't catch him. We <laughs> <laughs> walked off at half time, absolutely looked up, Ponty pull flag, all I can hear is whee, Daffy doesn't think they've got me square in the eye, once you've got eye contact you can't back down, he's back down, he'll go around the valleys that he's back down, Greenwood couldn't take it, got to go strong, I knew I'd be alright, the, the lally would be behind me, five kicks off and right wing behind the big guy. And in unison the four lads from Ponty Bull, Lino and Goy, Rodney Trotter, you fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, he was practicing it all day. <laughs> before he came in. Unfortunately, most people look at me from behind, they go, oh my god, that's Brian Driscoll, then I turn around and they go, oh fuck. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> so obviously, um, going back to the weekend, uh, I can't remember what the score was, Jim, was it? England 61, Scotland 21. <laughs> Um, obviously we've got, uh, we've got, we've got a, plastic, a plastic Scott here next to me. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with Scotland, to be honest with you, because I genuinely thought, I didn't just say, I did, I did the ITV punditry stuff for the first time, and so I had to have a balanced approach, and I genuinely thought Scotland, off the back of the performances against Ireland and Wales, could have won the game, and we spoke about it seriously. We obviously jested about it on the podcast as well. But I thought it was a little bit of an embarrassment on, on Saturday, to be fair. Um, I'm hoping the Scottish fans don't turn on the Scottish players on the back of, on the back of that result. I hope they do, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference between me and Will. He's a nice guy, I'm not. It's, well, obviously, England are 18 from 18 under... Well, 17 from 17 under Eddie, but 18 on the spin in total. Um, we chatted earlier about 03, uh, and obviously... The comparisons between the England team. You go back to 03, Eddie Jones was coaching Australia, wasn't he, in that World Cup final? Um, what did you think of him then, and what do you think of him now? It, it, it's one of those Clive and Eddie in the old days, a, a bit of a verbal joust. Um, Eddie's had a couple of pot shots in a variety of different countries over the course of the last six weeks, six months. Um, as a player in 03, it was nothing that ever overly concerned us. Um, you don't win test matches in a newspaper, you don't um, influence games by what's being said in, in the small print on the back page of the sport. Uh, as a supporter, as a neutral, it makes fascinating read. I love the fact he's come out, and Gordon's like, 
love the fact that he's come out and cramped up the pressure on his own team this week and said it's a World Cup final. If you'd asked me this three months ago or four months ago, I'd have said Ireland will win this game. I now just feel there's this sense of self-belief within this organisation and in this team that can withstand whatever onslaught comes their way. What we're absolutely guaranteed is it's not 61-21, it's not 42-6 from a long time ago. Um, This is barbaric, brutal, epic, and don't leave the stadium early. Again, it's all London Pride. <laughs> <laughs> Although they're very good drinks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andy Farrell, Ireland defensive coach. His son Owen, England inside centre superstar, as someone said. I think it's going to be the first time he's ever coached against his son, and vice versa. Um, which will, you know, your dad obviously uh, coached England, etc., etc. I mean, how difficult is that going to be? Because, uh, you know, I'm still shit scared of my dad now. He's right, <laughs> well, as, well, as Gordon thinks of uh, the intellectual answer to that, I can tell you what it was like with my dad. Um, old school, a couple of stories you always had. Uh, because as a country, at the moment, there's, there's HIAs and head injury assessments finish my mind, so. going on all the time. <laughs> and um, my old man in the old days, they, they had all these computer systems now, don't they, which, which test whether you're fit enough to take the field again, doctor's assessment. In the old days, if you got concussion, it was three week, three week mandatory ban. So the one thing my old man always used to say to me, I'm not sure this is the father thing he says, never leave the field with concussion. <laughs> a, I'm not quite sure how you know if you've been concussed. <laughs> but he would always say, never leave. And so something stuck in my brain. So that if we go back to the Lions in 97, in Bloemfontein, and I got a swing tackle, sleeve, straps, touched my arm, whipped round, smashed my head, unconscious for 17 minutes, swallowed my tongue. Dr. James Robson thought I was going to die. Always, every time he runs up to Scotland, I'd raise a little glass to, to, to Robbo, who's been the last doctor on the last seven last talk. Amazing man. He was going to give you a tracheotomy. Mum's in the change room. It's all in the living room. Lines. William, William, what have you done? It's what all my mates say when I'm being out of behaviour. William, William, what have you done? On the 97 lines talk. Anyway, jump in the ambulance. Only room for one. Dad jumps in with me. Still unconscious. No idea what's going on. I'm up to 17 minutes. I think I'm dying. And something in the back of the head is reminding me from Grange over sounds of the old caravan trips we used to go on as family. The dad would teach me rugby, talk about contact, do some rugby, that never leave the field of concussion. I sit bolt upright on the gurney, I'm like, the African hospital in the river. I sit bolt up, it's absolutely what I said. My dad, he says, he'll be talking about his story when he dies on our deathbed. We'll be laughing about this particular, you know, the laugh or crap. I sit bolt upright on the gurney on the way to hospital, I can swallow my tongue and being unconscious for 17 minutes. Understand that you never leave with the field with concussion. I said, Walter, I said, Dad, Dad, tell him it's my hamstring. Well, my answer's a shit man. <laughs> Going on the Lions tour, um, how difficult or how easy is it teaming up with the opposition teams off the back of smashing 10 bells of shit out of each other all year? in such a quick space of time for the success that they're going to that you guys have had online stores in the past for these guys going to New Zealand they're going to have to have that camaraderie straight away is it difficult or not I'm not sure what success you you thought when I was in 2005 which you is the biggest cluster fuck ever <laughs> um, but that is the that is the challenge in the Lions and I'm really Glad for the franchise and for the, for what it is that they won in Australia, uh, in the on the last tour because it potentially was getting becoming so hard for the Northern Hemisphere to put these players to get together. You see the amount of times how uh, attritional the Premiership is and the Pro Twelve and I, I know the say the Irish players are are rest with the international, but then they play it. They don't get as injured as much. They play. The season is so long in the Northern Hemisphere. You're trying to amalgamate these four teams together. Like you look at the schedule this year, and the guys who are in the uh, Premiership final are going to miss the first two weeks of tour. You you got to say Owen Farrell is going to be in that final, barring injury, is going to be an integral part of the Lions tour and misses two weeks of it. You know, how does how do you get players to to, together, the traditional way, which you know, we all uh, would have resonated with, is uh, we go out in the piss and uh, break down a few barriers and uh, and and have a bit of crack. But is that the way to do it anymore? 
It is. Okay, oh yes it is. <laughs> oh god, just bring some black herring with you and you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a challenge. I do think this is. Whenever you look at the Lions team, and again, this fucking pains me to say it, when England are strong, the Lions are strong. Um, when there's a good backbone of English players in there, they have the biggest resources in the Northern Hemisphere, and um, they have the biggest player pool. When these guys are playing, playing on confidence, and you have a good caliber of those guys playing, the Lions are invariably, invariably strong. Um, you have to say, I mean, the question with the England 15, almost as you would be, which one of the England 15 isn't going on the last tour? Still on Hartley. No chance. <laughs> Lions captain. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> we, I think the, the it's called a pod podcast for some unknown reason um, today, but we don't have enough time to cover to cover, to cover that off. But no, listen. Um, so you sit on the fence, and you you are saying not one English player. We should, we should just pick fifteen English players, shouldn't we? Or are you going to sit on the fence that much? Or? <laughs> <laughs> on the spot now, wouldn't you? Well, I would say it is a hard. It's hard not to pick a lot of them. Having this conversation, like England got four second rows that could all tour. You know, where do you put Mario Toji? Is he actually a six? Is he uh, a five and a half? Like, where, like, where do you go? I do think Ty Furlong is ahead of a lot of props. So when you're talking about maybe into the starting fifteen, like there's going to be 40, 45 players used on this tour. He's not going to do what um, Clive Woodward did and bring 45 players, but there will be 38 players going and there will be seven or eight, nine players going in on this, uh, going on, going on this tour. Um, but I think New Zealand are as beatable as they have been in a lot of years. And they finally, the Richie McCall, Dan Carter, Shadow has finally, they've stepped out from behind that and initially it was very positive, but now I think they are not standing as tall as they necessarily were. And the, the leadership capability, and this is one thing you cannot, one of the things I think England, why England were so successful in 2003 was the leadership they had. And you go right the way through Martin Johnson, you have Neil Bark and Richard Hill, who for me is probably one of the most unsung players in the history of rugby. An incredible leader, you had Delaglio, you had this bell end, you had, <laughs> Johnny, you had Johnny Wilkinson. This is a podcast, so he was pointing yeah, thanks. Thanks very much for that, guys. So we're just going to move on. We've had a couple of questions. Well, we've had a few questions from the audience via social media, but also from the floor. I'm not going to say who they are, just in case they've not turned up. So a couple of fun ones. So Will, I didn't know this. Apparently, Brian O'Driscoll and Austin Healy had a boxing match. Am I right in saying that? Did you go to it? Who won? I hope, uh, hope Adrico uh, smashed him. Yeah. Lions tour. Um, 2001, Manly Pacific Hotel, beautiful hotel, big glass windows, works out on the seafront. And a fitness guy called Steve Black, who worked a lot with Johnny Wilkinson, uh, always had a, a cra cracking phrase, I never quite understood it. He'd sprint! And now accelerate! And I'm thinking, well, he's Jordy, by the way, And I'm already sprinting, how the fuck do I accelerate? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm at maximum speed. And he's going, think fast, be fast! Thinking fast, I'm still not fast. <laughs> but he, he would do a lot of boxing, and um, the gloves would be lying around in the team room, so people would play whatever particular game it was on the computer or going for a, for a wonder. In fact, on that, <laughs> Money Pacific, there's a great chip shop. Go out the hotel, go down on the right hand side, and um, uh, <laughs> I don't remember who it was. It was probably Austin, but then cranked up the debate for later on. He dropped four of we all you all have hoodies. So he dropped five or six chips down road on and put them on Roland O'Gary's hoodie, right? <laughs> the seagulls in fucking manly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. He nearly killed him. <laughs> no, but clearly he's attacking him because he didn't know what to get rid of. Because he didn't know there were chips in his hood. Um, plastic on. So anyway, the boxing gloves, it's got a long story short, boxing gloves are in the meeting room. And uh, Oz is a bit like the Duracell bunny. It's always, it needs, something needs to be happening the whole time. What's happening? 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 Can, can be a little bit grating. 
Uh, he's always up, he's kicking his neck with what's going on. Right, you know. So he picks up the gloves and he, he gives a couple of lads a little tap. And he's having a little tap. And everybody's like, get away, let's get away, let's get away. Anyway, Drinko knows what's going on. He gets up, goes and puts the gloves on. And we're thinking, this could be interesting. <laughs> and uh, the dining tables were all actually around. It was this weird thing. And uh, within about 30 seconds, we were all grabbing the napkins, throwing, just trying to stop the fight. Uh-huh. No one had all lost him. The drinker was all in all Ireland under 16 boxing champ. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you trying to ours, stop it? Ours was swinging wildly, and yeah. drinker was just pop, pop, pop. So we let it go for a couple of minutes, and then uh, they decided to call it. But yeah, that 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 did. That did take place. I think that's all we've got time for. Um, so just a round of applause, please, for the two legends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a, big, a big thank you to uh, London, London Pride in Guinness for putting the event on for us. Round of applause. And uh, uh, me and Goody don't need a round of applause, but if you want to download the Rugby Pod on iTunes, you can find it. I think it's number six in the charts. Yeah, let's get it out. Yeah, we'll do, share it, tweet it, and this should be on there. But thanks very much for coming. It's been a great evening. Um, yeah. Enjoy the rest of it. Thank you very Becoming much. Coming, Melodia.